Whoa. Thank you. Welcome to the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. I'm your host, Rolling Bubba Grimes, and as always, I welcome you to the next edition of the Not Just Sports and Entertainment Show. Here I have with me two gentlemen who are laughing at me as I'm trying to get this intro out. We laughing uh, with you, bro. We <laughs> laughing with you. Yeah. All the way to my right, um, your far left is um, the uh, CEO of Helms Fitness Center and our co-host, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for Mr. Eugene Helms. Thank you, brother. How you doing today? Man, I'm terrific. How are you? Man, you look good. Man. Thank you. Excuse me for reaching deep. over you, man. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just glad to be able to extend my arm without busting a stitch in my jacket. <laughs> Uh, when Eugene says I'm looking good, he's usually referring to the fact that I'm starting to get more svelte as the days go by. <laughs> Having said that, we're recording live here at the Society Lounge in Silver Spring, Maryland. I want to say hello to my good friends out there in Chicago, Illinois. You know who you are. To some of my Facebook aficionados, Miss Michelle Davis, Mr. J.P. Doar, Mr. Jonathan Clark, and a whole bunch of other good folks. I want to say hello again to my friends out there, Indiana, Illinois, California, Florida, Virginia, and Mesopotamia. It doesn't get any better than that. Hey, folks, when we first started this, we are going to put this on local television alone. However, somebody came to me one day and said, man, if you put this thing on the internet, people can watch it any place at any time. Lamont, I looked at them and said, man, people don't want to see me that much. They said, well, what you need to do is get you a couple of different co- what you laughing at me? What you need to do is get you a couple of different co-hosts so they don't have to look at your big head all the time. So having said that, folks, welcome to this edition as we introduce uh, a gentleman who runs a company by the name of KG1 Consulting. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Lamont J. Baxter. Mm. Now, did I get the intro correct? You got it correct, brother. Lamont, how you doing? I'm well. It's yeah, a pleasure right. to be here. Lamont, I'm going to start with this, man. You're in the consulting business. Now, that's a very broad and amorphic term. Mm-hmm. I hope amorphic is a word. If I, if it isn't, you all forgive me. <laughs> Especially my English teacher, Mr. Goyette. I'm sorry. <laughs> amorphous term. That's it. That's the word, amorphous term. What does consulting mean to you? To me, consulting means more of an uh, advisory capacity. We work towards you know, helping people identify where they want to be, whether it's business, whether it's financial. Where do you want to be? You know, one of the things that we like to do at KG1 is encourage people to dream big. Dream as big as you can. And, and my conversations really? and my consultants, what we do is we sit down and we help you tell us about your dreams. Because nothing great can ever start or be completed until you first have the idea and the dream. And what we do at KG1 Consulting is once we hear your dream, we actually help you put a plan together to reach that dream. Now, as you put this plan together, is it a cookie-cutter approach? Sort of like when people tell me, you know, uh, Roland, in order for everyone in the world to lose weight, they have to uh, uh, consume X number of calories, and they have to eat this much protein, and then everybody's going to lose weight. Is that the way you approach it, or do you do it differently? Now, we have to do it differently because, you know, no one plan can fit everyone. Like you said, no one nutritional plan is going to get the same results from everybody. That's why it's very important for us to have a conversation, a meaningful conversation where I'm not telling you what to do. I'm listening to you tell me what you want. And then we bring together all of the resources that we have to help you get your dream to fruition. Obviously, everything that needs to be planned out and that's something that we don't do a lot of. A lot of people just kind of throw something against the wall and let's see what happens. The reality is the successful people always, always have a plan. Right, right you the plan. You're a fitness trainer. You have a plan for people when you train. Right. You know, it, it, whether it's fitness, whether it's nutrition, whether it's financial, whether it's business, it doesn't matter. If you do not have a plan, what you have is a wish. And it's okay to wish, but if you really want it to come to reality, you have to have a plan. You have to have someone with some knowledge to help you implement that plan. Right. You have to have an accountability person mm-hmm. to check and make sure that you're doing what you said you right. were going to do. Right. Again, that's why we ask you, what do you want? Not, I'm not going to tell you what you need to do. I want to hear from you what you want. 
and then I'll hold you accountable based on what you want. Because once you start deviating from the plan, my first question is, well, what wow. changed? Yeah, right. Right. What changed? Yeah. Do, do you not want this security for your family anymore? Are you not concerned about getting the funds for educating your children anymore? If, I mean, what changed? If something changed, that's cool. But I need, need to know, know that. what it is. I need to know that. Now, Eugene, there's an old acronym, uh, so to speak, okay. that says, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in your projects and the things that you're involved with, how important, now, I don't want you to give me a, a, what I call a, a, a panned answer. How important and how critical is planning for the endeavors that you're involved in with other people? Planning is a lifeline between your successes and your failures. Okay. Mm. So one of the things that even when I built my business, that you need to have a business planner, you need to have a financial advisor, you need to have somebody that's going to keep you in line. Because what happens is that as a business owner, you're doing so many things. When you're a small entrepreneur, until mm -hmm. you you have to be the CEO, then you have to be the driver, right. you have to be all these right. things. So right. you need someone right. to say, look, if you're trying to uh, make 500k in the next two or three years, how are we going to go by? We're going to get, we need to have X number of clients, we're going to have X number of contracts for this to happen. And if this doesn't happen, we have to know exactly what we need to do. And that's why we come back to our advisor and say, look, you know what, you might want to reach this, but you know what, you know, realistically, this may be your ideal plan. Mm -hmm. So now, the Mike Tyson was famous for saying, everyone has a plan. Until what? <laughs> Until, Until they get, they get hit. hit. Until they get hit. <laughs> so Mike would walk into the ring and everybody had the strategy. And I used to do a little little boxing training. And the, and the strategy partly with Mike was, since he was a little uh, horizontally challenged, <laughs> all right, is we, we jab him on, on the top of the bridge of his nose. All right, and that, that helps to stiffen his neck up. And the, with that big neck, it made it hard. Mm -hmm. And then we jab him a little bit and just move, stay at an angle. You know, and make sure you look for that hook. So when that hook comes, you just kind of slide out the way, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is a, this is a theorem, okay? okay? Okay. So we jab him on top of the bridge of that nose, and then just when we faint that jab, we hit him with a right cross, come up with a left uppercut, and then back that up with a left hook. I don't know if you all saw that, but <laughs> okay, man, <laughs> man, that's all cool until Mike all of a sudden hits you right in your rib cage, mm -hmm. and all of the feeling in the left side of your body just goes. Right? <laughs> what? do we do mm -hmm. when we get hit? That's an that's a, that's a awesome question. And the answer is really simple. Know, first of all, that a plan is a continuing, breathing, right. living thing. Oh, okay. It's a, a plan is a work in progress? It's a work really? in progress, and it has to be. Anybody that's an effective planner is someone that you're going to develop a relationship with right. that's going to be there from the beginning to the end. We all go through life stages. You just graduated from college, you have one set of money and one set of cares. You may be single, no children. So there's a different format that, and a different conversation for your plan than when you get married and you get your first real chief financial officer, your wife. You know, once you get that, there's got to be a different plan. And then once you have children, there's got to be a different plan. So this is a living, breathing thing. We're not going to, no plan is cut in stone, which again is why nobody can give you pat standard information and say this will work just do this no it can't now how do you help people and we're going to take a break in a second but how do you help people both of you how do you help people get past that time when they get hit with that you know where he's famous for throwing that left he mm -hmm. hits you with that right right up under right under your armpit and all of this goes numb and all of a sudden now you don't have the left side of your body to throw punches with how do you get them and get us Back to the point where we can continue to, to stay in the ring and battle for what it is that we know our goal is, how do you get us back there? So for me, I take a, a word that's commonly used, and uh, in, 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 it's a commonly used word, and I eradicate it from my vocabulary. Okay. And I tell my clients up front that this is a word that you and I can never have when we're conversing, and that is try. I don't believe in try. You either do it or you don't. Now, failure to me means that you had a plan, you were going through your execution, Mike knocked you down, 
You either get up or you lay down. You bust the Douglas or you somebody else. That's it. You either get up or you lay down. And then once you get back up, okay, if that didn't work, let's move it. But see, you can't try to do something. No. You either do it or you don't. Or you, don't. Right. you follow me? And so you that's know, what you have to do. It's funny. I saw that in this movie. What was it? I'm a star. And the guy said something about maybe. And the guy said he didn't understand maybe. It's either yes or it's no. There's no middle ground. Help me understand that a little bit better, man. Just like, just like we say, whenever you're doing a plan, whenever you're running a business, you, you, when you're having people that are, that are um, supporting you and people that, that you're working with or working for, working for you, you have to be able to uh, have that stick to it as, as far as moving forward. Because, like you said, if I have a person that's working for me, they don't want to hear I can't or maybe we might maybe get, get this contract. They want to hear the confidence in me that it's going to be done. So one of the things you have to do is that when you're focused as far as you plan, although you might not achieve your goal, understand this, you're much further ahead before than mm -hmm. you would have been. And that's what you have to look at. Oftentimes, okay. people end up failing their plan or end up giving up because they didn't reach their goal. Okay. Now see, the key words that you said is giving up. You know, that, to me, that's when you fail. You know, right. and I'm going to get back to that okay. when we come back. Because we're going to talk about both personal and professional. Mm -hmm. We're actually a third one, entrepreneurial. Okay. Endurance. Okay. Right. Folks, we'll be right back. Real important show, Rolling Bubba Grimes. Sit tight. We'll be right back at you. Mm -hmm. Hello. My name is Dr. Arthur McClennan. I've dedicated my life to providing surgical care to patients with heart disease. My life began in the slums of Soweto in South Africa, where I learned to overcome adversity and illnesses, including the death of my best friend. That's why I want to be a resource for you and your family for consultation related to heart and cardiovascular needs. You can learn more about me by visiting my website, which is at ZuluChessCutter.com. What? <laughs> All right, folks. Welcome back, Rolling Bubba Grimes. Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show, here at the Society Lounge, Silver Spring, Maryland. Now, personally, professional entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as we're going through this journey mm -hmm. and these different stages, and we encountered these different stages, mm -hmm. why, what is it about us as human beings that make us quit on the way to the on the way to that goal. I think that it's uh, a combination of lack of training. And now my history, I was a former United States Marine. The training that I was, was you know had been given put me in a mindset that does not allow me to quit. It doesn't matter what odds I'm facing. I cannot, I will not quit. I don't even understand what that means. So I have to continue to forge forward. So it's a mindset. People have to get that mindset. You know, financial planning really is about behavior. It's about controlling your behavior and, and setting up your ideas. So if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to run a business, you have to have the proper mindset. If you, you know, it, everything is about what you think and how you are going to react to how you feel. And, and that's it. That is it. You just have to make up your mind that regardless of whatever comes my way, I'm going to be successful, and, and I'm going to find the people around me to okay. help me do that. All right, cool. So now someone has a goal. They're going to lose X number of pounds in X number of months. You're working with them. They cut you the check. Here we go. Now, two or three months later, all of a sudden, life gets in the way, and they're not coming around anymore. When you see them a year later, typically, do they reach that goal, or are they still right back where they um, started from? Most of the time, they're right back to where they started from if they haven't did what they're supposed to do. Now, and I tell my clients, I had one young lady that lost 10, 10 and a half pounds within a week and a half. What most people didn't realize is that in her background or in her history, she had a history as far as her family members losing weight mm -hmm. at a rate. So this was a genetic thing? It was a genetic thing. So then I could put on the information and say, okay, I've, I've actually trained this lady and worked about 10 and a half pounds, but it's so far-fetched from the truth. One thing that I tell my clients is a realistic approach. You gotta be real you, know, you have to be realistic with your clients as far as where you're gonna go. Now it's good that you wanna go and succeed at a certain level. However, you have to be focused and understand that if you don't receive at that level that you have to make sure you continue to keep doing what you're doing because no matter if you only make two dollars this month and four dollars next month, that's more than what you made. Mm -hmm. And also you have to understand is that you wanna be focused 
as far as doing what it, it, it is supposed or doing what your financial advisor is still for you to do in order for you to be successful. Because Rome has Rome wasn't built in one day. Yeah, but it tore that sucker down in like a few short hours. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now you you're going to give some professional consulting in terms of my business model. You're going to give some professional consulting in terms of my financial model. Mm -hmm. Now, I start today. Okay. A year from now, there I'm going to realize that I have more issues than I had right. before I started the plan. The okay. reason why is because now I realize that I have issues. When I didn't have a plan, it didn't matter. Yep. I just went and I did Freelance. and I ate and I did whatever mm -hmm. I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden you have given me some constraints. Okay. Now you have given me some guidelines. Now you have given me a roadmap. Now if I just get in the car and I want to drive to Inglewood, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and I just start driving and I have no idea. You're what, never, you're never going to get there. Okay. So <laughs> let's just say as I'm along the way and I end up in uh, Bo, Montana, mm -hmm. I just say, okay, well, you know what? It's better, this beats being where it was. <laughs> but the issue is, or, or one of the questions that I have for you is this. As people are moving along in this, in this process, mm -hmm. and they discover that, wait a minute, but this is either harder than I thought it would be, or you know what, as long as I was going out whenever I wanted to go out, mm -hmm. it was cool. Now mm -hmm. I have to deal with the psychological impact mm -hmm. of not being able to go out and go on vacation every year and spend three, four thousand dollars like I was doing. Now the psychological impact of that is I'm not as excited about the summertime as I was. Okay. I'm not as excited about the birthdays because I can't just drop a thousand dollars every time I want on somebody's birthday. Mm -hmm. When we get there, and you say it's behavior said, when we get there, what types of things can we do? to get over that psychological hump mm -hmm. because all of a sudden now our eyes are wide open okay. and we realize that, you know what, this whole thing has changed because I have these new goals mm -hmm. and I didn't factor in the fact that my lifestyle is going to be a lot different. Well, let, let's take a couple of steps back okay. because, again, the, the initial conversation for you and I is me listening to what you said is important to you. Okay. You know, because that's the only way that I get any client to buy into the plan. But it, sometimes, even when I tell you what's important to me, that's not really what's important to me. Well, you know, I, I you know, <laughs> again, my background is extremely diverse. Okay, the, the Marine is one thing. I'm also a former detective. And so I'm really good at getting through the looking at BS. The eyes, okay. <laughs> looking at the physical language. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so, so, so you know, that guy that says, I'm not do you really want to get that? No, you don't. No, you I'm don't. Watching the, I'm watching the right switch in your whole field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. and, so, and that's very, very important. And, right. and that's what we teach at KG1, our consultants, how to be effective listeners. You're only going to do and stay on your plan if it's important to you. And that's the way that we build a plan. And you just keep building on that. And so I'm going to ask you, if you and I are sitting down here three years from now, tell me how you feel about your business. What What's made you happy about your business? So you'll start creating and painting that picture for me, and then we'll start working towards you getting there, so I know you're going to stay on that road. I know you are. Versus me just saying, well, I need you to stop going to the coffee place and give up this, that, and other thing. That, that's not the kind of financial planning that we do. Right. You know, I, is, We are very good at automating everything, number one. Because what I've found, especially in today's society, is the more automatic I can make it for you, the easier it is for you yes. to stick to the plan. Yes. And, and once we build the plan and we get you used to the automation, it runs by itself. You know, I have this saying that, you know, I have to have every single penny that you earn have a job description. I, I have these cufflinks, I love them, they're all pennies. And I tell my clients, I said, these two pennies, their job description is to keep my shirt closed. Now I want you to reach in your pocket and tell me what those two pennies are for. What are you going to do with it? Because I know we've all met somebody. And what, and what does somebody say in answer to that? They look at me crazy. Because I'm about to look at you crazy. Yeah, but, so, what, so the story what, that what I would tell say? after that is, okay, how many times have you gone to the teller machine Friday on payday, right. okay, pulled out a couple hundred dollars, stuck it in your pocket, and then come Sunday morning, you ain't got no money to put in the plate in church. You don't have a clue what happened to the money. You know why? Because you didn't give every penny that you pulled out of that machine a job description. But if you if you give it a job description before you put it in your hand, 
and you make sure that it's doing what you said you wanted to do, now we know where our money's going. Now we can stick to our plan. Now we can start to build wealth and we can have a legacy and something to pass on to our children and our grandchildren. It's a real good point. Now, when we come back, we're going to finish up on that note about the legacy. Yes, sir. And also we're going to talk about financial literacy in general. Excellent. All right, folks, we'll be right back. Rolling Grime Show. Sit tight. Thank you. Welcome back to the Rolling Grimes, not just sports entertainment show, Eugene Hellams, Rolling Bubble Guy, yes. Grimes, Lamont J. Baxter. Uh, Lamont, here's the thing now. People, I have talked to a number of people mm -hmm. in the financial service industry, and I want you all to hear this very clearly. Right. And I've tried to convince them that we need to put together a program just around financial literacy mm -hmm. that we can air online. Mm -hmm. Rolling Grimes show financial literacy or whatever the heck it's going to be called okay. so we can bring professionals like yourself on and do this modeling for people in three minute, five minutes vignettes mm -hmm. and I think you talked about perhaps doing that yourself. And I'm amazed at how many people even in our industry really don't want to spend the time to educate other people. So I look at their business execution and I'm a little bit concerned about how they want to do business as right. much as I am about somebody else who's talking about doing business right. because if I give you an opportunity to educate people about what you're doing and bring them to you and you don't pull that trigger, I'm a little bit mystified. Right. So that kind of disturbs me a little bit, especially when I tell you we're going to do some educating now. Financial literacy to me is something that needs to start taking place much younger. Mm -hmm. I, I did a book, I did a paper years ago and okay. I talked about how my daughter, my oldest daughter was learning about money when she was going to McDonald's with me one day to buy some fries versus some chicken McNuggets versus something else. And she was making a